Oh, thank God, a short one. Hey y'all, it's nice to see you. I'm Noah, and welcome to Arcade Games. Today we're going to discuss the boilerplate code that is generated automatically every time you make a new C-sharp script in Godot. Having a basic understanding of this code will help you grasp other concepts as you continue to learn the language. In programming, boilerplate code refers to sections of code that are repeated in many places with little to no variation. Usually this type of code is necessary for the operation of the program and doesn't directly contribute to its functionality, but that's not always the case. The boilerplate code in a Godot C Sharp script does have some slight variation and not every part of it is necessary, but it still fits the description. If you're coming from a GD script background, you're probably used to, at most, an extend statement and two empty functions that automatically generate for you that you might not even use. So this all might seem like an unnecessary complication, but there is a method to the madness that you'll sort of understand by the end of this video and really understand as you continue to use C-sharp. So let's take a peek at that test script we launched in the previous lesson. First things first, if you're following along with these lessons and you're using VS Code as your IDE of choice, you'll notice that my code window looks different. That's because I use JetBrains Rider as my personal IDE. This will in no way change anything taught in this or any lesson, and you can follow along just fine with VS Code or any other IDE. What I would like you to do to start this lesson is pause this video for a quick minute, read over this default script, and just make some guesses as to what you think each line may mean using context clues. Understanding things via context clues is a huge part of programming, so let's sharpen those skills now. Think of it as a game. You're not going to win anything, but if that makes it more fun for you, right on. The best diet is the one you're going to be able to stick to. So, pause the video, do your thing, and I'll be right here waiting for you. Let's see how accurate your assumptions were, starting with these two lines at the top. Here we have using Godot and using system, both ending in semicolons. Using system is dulled out in my IDE and likely yours. Godot is the engine we're using, so that's interesting. And system sounds important. So what are these lines all about? If you guess something along the lines of this is a way to include code from other files into this one, give yourself a big old pat on the back, you win the prize. These statements are officially known as using directives, or namespace includes. Namespaces are a way to group various bits of code together. You'd want to do this for a few reasons. It makes debugging easier, it allows you to differentiate between commonly named items in your code, and you can make these things called assemblies using namespaces, which can help your code compile faster. Remember that build process I mentioned in the first video? It's a way to speed that up. In this case, Godot is a namespace, and system is a namespace. Using is the keyword we use to use a namespace. But what are these semicolons all about? In several programming languages, semicolons end logical statements. They're basically like periods in a sentence, only for code. If you're coming from GDScript, it's the same as making a new line. One difference between GDScript and C-sharp is that C-sharp doesn't care about new lines and indents. You could write your scripts all on one line if you wanted to and are a psychopath. But C Sharp not caring about this white space, as it's called, is actually pretty great, as it allows you to style your code how you see fit. The last bit I want to mention about using directives is why using system is grayed out. It's simple, really. None of the code in the file currently uses any code from the system file, and that's the way the IDE is letting us know it can be removed if we keep the script in its current state. All right, let's move right along to the next line. Public partial class my script colon node 2D. That's a, that's a mouthful. Right away, you should notice our script name, so that's cool. And a node 2D is what we put the script on in the last lesson, and that's here. But what does this all mean? Before we go any further, I need to make something clear. Learning programming, and game dev in general, is not a straight path. You will often be exposed to concepts and be expected to work with them before fully understanding them. Everything sort of feeds into everything else and loops around, and it won't be until you get a bit further along in your learning journey where everything clicks. So 
I'm going to do my best to explain this line to you now, but if it's still a bit confusing, know that we're still several full concepts away from an oh now I get it moment. That's not because either of us is dumb. I mean, I might be, but that's just the way learning an object-oriented language works. All right, so let's start at the beginning, since that's a very good place to start. Public. What do we know about that word? It makes it sound like something is out there, available, ready to be seen. The word public is a keyword in C Sharp, meaning that it's reserved by the language, and it's one of three accessor modifiers. We'll get more in depth into what those are in a future video. For now, know that public means that this class, which is our script, is visible and can be referenced by other scripts we may write. The next word is partial. Partial is also a keyword, but it's one that you won't see in a ton of C-sharp programs. However, it does have a very important use case here. Without getting into the weeds, the way Godot works with C-sharp is that it takes the code you write, generates some of its own based off of that, and feeds that back to the engine to make your game work. The partial keyword is an indicator to the engine that it can auto-generate the code it needs to for this script. Any script you write that's attached to a node in your scene tree needs to be partial. Just leave it there and don't worry too much about it. Next up is the word class. Classes are a big deal in object-oriented programming. In fact, they're the entire point of object-oriented programming, and yet they're also not a concept that can be fully explored until a little bit later. For now, think of a class as a definition of some concept you're programming, like player character or coin pickup. In this case, the concept is my script, which is nonsense, but let's roll with it for now. Every time you make a script, you're making a class of some type, and that's why the class name here is the same as your script name. Finally, we've got colon node 2D. These two things go together, so let's talk about them together. This is how you indicate a class inherits from another class. Inheritance is say it with me, an advanced concept that can't be explored fully until later. The thousand-foot view of this concept is that inheritance allows you to build code on top of other code. Anytime you attach a script to a node in your scene tree, the class in that script will inherit from the node type. It's easy to think of nodes in your scene tree as things, but they're really just code, and by inheriting from that node type, your script has access to the code that belongs to that node type. Inheritance in C-sharp and other pure object-oriented languages goes far, far deeper than this, and well beyond what GDScript offers, but those details will have to wait for another time. Moving on to the next line, you see an opening curly brace that matches the closing curly brace down here. C-sharp groups code using curly braces. So, logical statements end in semicolons, and curly braces group those logical statements together. Lastly, we're going to talk about these two chunks here. This one is labeled underscore ready. This one is labeled underscore process. These chunks, individually, are called methods. Methods are the blocks of code where you write instructions for how to do things. Do you want an enemy to take damage? You're going to have to write the instructions for how that works in a method. You want a character to move? You're going to have to write that in a method. You want to coordinate a bunch of objects at once to make a celebratory victory screen? You're going to need a method. Likely several. These two methods are commonly used built-in Godot methods, and that's why they're auto-generated in your scripts. We're not going to go over the details of each in this video. Instead, we're going to save that for the video after next, when we talk about methods in depth. What we can talk about, as in-depth as you can possibly talk about them, are these lines starting in slash slash that are in green. These are called comments. If you start a line with a slash slash like this, everything after the slash slash will be ignored in your code. This allows you to write little notes explaining what a block of code does, as you see here, or you can use them to write little love notes to your fellow developers. So that's it. That's what all that gobbledygook means when you create a new c -sharp script. Now that you have a high-level understanding of the boilerplate, we can start getting into writing C-sharp code. In the next video, we're going to talk about variables, the most commonly used type of data in any computer program. We're gonna start getting crazy! So, please make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss that lesson. 
Until then, I wish the best to you and yours, and I can't wait to see you again. Take care.